Hello, I'm Dickie Arbiter. And I'm Victoria Arbiter, and you're watching Royal Report, the show where we're going to dabble in a little myth-busting, share thoughts, ideas and opinions we've never shared before, and attempt to add a little common sense to the royal sphere. Now, I've been covering members of the royal family for the last 12 years. I've worked for a number of outlets around the world. And in the latter part of my teens, I lived at Kensington Palace. The reason we were living there, well, I'm going to toss it back to my dad, who is in London. I'm in New York. And we're going to attempt to bring all this royal stuff to you from both sides of the pond. Over to you, Dad. And the reason we were living at Kensington Palace is very simple, because I was one time uh, Queen's press secretary, late Queen Elizabeth II, and for five years of that time, I was also press secretary to the current king. So a lot of knowledge there, a lot to talk about, and quite frankly, we'd like your opinion. We'd like to know what you think. We'd like to know what you want to know. Just tell us what it is, and we'll do our best to, to answer it. And as Victoria just said, we're going to be doing a lot of myth busting. We're also going to be destroying the do not touch myth because there's a lot of that around. Victoria. In this particular episode, we're going to address a question we both get asked all the time. What was it like living at Kensington Palace? So before we get into that, we should establish which one Kensington Palace is, where it is and who else was living there. So, Dad, why don't you uh, share a little insight on that? Well, Kensington Palace was uh, popularly known as the Ant Heap because it was piled high with, with all sorts of arts, members of the royal family. And when I was working at Buckingham Palace from 1988, those living there were Diana, Princess of Wales, Princess Margaret, uh, Duke of Kent, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, and Prince and Princess Michael of Kent. Give you just a rough idea. It's about a mile and a half from Buckingham Palace. So. A lot of people living at Kensington Palace. Do people live at Buckingham Palace? Yeah, mainly the domestic staff. They live right on the top floor. It's not really suited for accommodation. Late Queen lived there uh, on the north side of the building, as did Prince Philip when they were working. Mainly they went out to Windsor, 25 miles from London. St. James's Palace is not a living palace. Clarence House, part of it is a living house, a living palace where uh, the current king has his residence and he lived there as the Prince of Wales and before him, his grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. Victoria. I think it's fair to say that Kensington Palace is probably one of the most homely palaces, as homely as a palace can possibly get. But it's not one big massive structure. It's actually broken up into lots of different apartments, lots of different houses. It's funny that William and Catherine's apartment there is referred to as an apartment because to anybody else it would be considered a veritable mansion. But it wasn't just the royals that were living there. There were also members of staff, people who worked for the royal family. And right next door to us was Lady Jane Fellows, who was the late Diana, Princess of Wales's older sister. She was married to Sir Robert Fellows. She still is married to Sir Robert Fellows, who was working as the Queen's private secretary at the time. And I do want to, though, just kind of... Uh, address people's expectations, I suppose. When we said we were living at Kensington Palace, people's eyes would be agog and think that we were in apartments with gilt leaf ceilings and fancy doors and surrounded by tapestries. But no, to put it into context, we were actually living in the old stable block. Uh, we were sharing the old stable block, as I said, with Diana's sister and, and her family, but also Paul Burrell, Diana's infamous butler, was living there. Sir Miles Hunt Davis, who was working for the Duke of Edinburgh, he was living there. So there was always somebody coming and going and it would be quite fun. I was in the latter part of my teens and I would try and drive out of the gates really fast because there'd be paparazzi waiting there to take pictures of Diana as she was off on her engagements or, or conducting her, her private affairs. So it was certainly a novel time to be living there in the 90s because, of course, there was so much going on, the breakdown of the Wales's marriage uh, and a lot of other things. And then along one side, so you have Kensington Palace on one side and then uh, along another road were all the embassies and, and foreign national residences where very fancy, important people were living. And so I think it's funny, looking back on it, I took it for granted really at the time, but it's only with hindsight that you can really appreciate what a tremendous privilege it was. But for all the good stuff that happened, there were also occasions where we were really reminded about 
the importance and the level of security that had to be implemented there because there was one day where we weren't allowed to go home and I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about, Dad. Yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. I arrived back there, uh, I went to pick something up for, uh, at lunchtime and I was confronted by the police. What had happened, a car bomb had exploded outside the Israeli embassy, which was a mere uh, 30 feet uh, from the old barracks where we were living. It was a stable block with a difference. It was built by Sir Christopher Wren in the 17th century at the same time that he actually built Kensington Palace. So what you had where we were living, the, where the horses were stabled, upstairs is where the grooms lived, and at the back were a row of garages, which is where the carriages were kept. So it was a very integral part of Kensington Palace. But going back to this bomb blast, it was quite horrendous because had anybody been in the building, in the old barracks, they might well have been cut by glass. Now, when I arrived back, my front door was fine. The, my, a colleague of mine who lived upstairs, his front door was completely blown in. Uh, Victoria was more worried. She had just left and she was more worried about our cat. Uh, our cat had sought sanctuary under a table or something, uh, and she was more concerned about that. But yeah, you always lived with high security. Bomb blasts never happened again, but it shouldn't have happened the first time, but it did. So living in Kensington Palace was quite a treat. You were part of the system, and when you got accommodation, you knew that you were very much a part of the system. <laughs>